Okay, as requested, let's do a little bit of tour of uh, some of the bits and pieces that we find in the sh Crackley studio. Over this side, we have uh, the two main PCs. The one on the right is a um, Windows PC, um, which I use for FL Studio and the like, uh, where I run my own plugins in. On the left is the Apple, which I use mostly for controlling the routing of everything. Uh, because I've got so many MIDI instruments, it's just a devil to try and route them all. Um, I have been using the eMagic uh, MIDI switches. As you can see, I've got one MT4 here, which is controlling some uh, of the PCs, mostly outputs. I've got another MT4 there, which is controlled, I've just had to get the other day, because I ran out of outputs on the other units. And then finally down over here in the rack, I've got an AMT8, which gives me eight ins and eight outs. So starting over here you can see that I've actually got uh, FL Studio running with one of my own plugins. Now I control that uh, from the USB keyboard at the bottom. In the keyboard rack that I have here above that, I have one of my favourite keyboards, uh, a fair, re relatively recent edition, that's the Yamaha SY85. Um, as I mentioned, I have the ability to route um, any keyboard to any other, but to be honest, I tend to use just there's just two or three that I use as keyboards that I play on, um, mainly because the action on them is so good. The SY85 is just one of those. The HS2 above it is another one that I use to play from and then over here on the right hand side there's the QS6 which I also use as a uh, keyboard to play from. So you can see here the uh, software I use on the Mac, just a very simple uh, MIDI patch pay program that's where I route the instruments uh, through and you can have multiple connections, you can branch one instrument to many uh, from one source to many destinations you can have multiple sources and destinations all running within one patch and that can all be brought back uh, as a patch this I think is a, if I remember correctly this was a free piece of software MIDI patch bay very much recommended for this it's absolutely brilliant what you see down on the Apple taskbar though is I have another um, audio MIDI setup which I think is uh, not a standard install on Apple. It's, it's in the standard Apple product where you have to elect to have it installed. The beauty of that system is it gives you the ability and you can see here that I have all of my MIDI ins and outs mapped to specific devices. You have the opportunity to pull through um, graphics of the particular devices you're connecting to um, and control all the routing, the actual physical wire of the routing here. The advantage of that being that when I go back into the, uh, the program I just showed you, the MIDI patcher, that when I actually call down a uh, selection at the top here, what you'll actually see is that I actually have the actual instruments listed by name. So you can see that I've got the Alesis QS6. So, so I tend to go with the Yamaha by default as my sort of go-to keyboard to play on. Right, so the Yamaha SY85, absolutely fantastic piece of kit. Um, it obviously it's a dated instrument now, it's back from the was it the uh, late 80s, early 90s I think probably was its uh, era, but uh, it's a fantastic key keyboard to play on and I actually like the sounds on it anyway and there's just so many sounds for it, not only the inbuilt sounds but of course with the uh, floppy disk that you see on the left hand side here, there is, you have the opportunity there to add many more sounds into it. Um, so it, is, can, it can be used as a sampling workstation. It has a sequencer and so on and so forth built into it, which I don't ever use, of course, because I use the PCs for that. But um, in terms of the sound, above that we have the HS2. Uh, Casio's attempt at uh, creating a competitor to the uh, Yamaha DX7, the, the, the Hona HS2 was a clone of the VZ1, with the Casio VZ1. Um, 
it's an acquired tasty types of instruments I actually personally like the sound of these these um, digital instruments the DX7 I haven't don't have one of those but I like that type of sound this one is a very distinctive <laughs> distinctive sound um, just briefly you'll see also above these keyboards I also have a Windows XP machine which is housed in the rack I use that for patch uh, writing so on the left hand side uh, we have a old Casio HT6000 which I'm still debating whether to keep or not underneath that just about hidden in there I think you can just about see a Korg Prophecy if I had my way I would probably replace that with a Korg Z1 um, as good as the Prophecy is I, and I like the sounds of the Prophecy and the playability of it is, is sensational but um, I would prefer an instrument that is a bit more flexible in terms of polyphony below that I have the Elysis QS6 um, this is actually an instrument which I, I never knew too much about so I'm not sure whether the people have ever caught on to it but the Elysis instruments are pretty nice I mean I haven't got a very not a particularly uh, intriguing sound on there at a minute but some of the uh, instrument sounds are pretty good I think you know um, below that the another owner clone of a Casio instrument in this case it's the FZ1 which was Casio's sampling instrument um, just only got this recently it has got a dodgy screen unfortunately which I thought I could replace with the screen for my V uh, FZ10 uh, but unfortunately they're totally different so I bought a Duff FZ10 on eBay um, luckily it only cost a couple of quid so uh, took it a bit and then found that the uh, screen didn't work I have managed to put a backlight in the screen though which helps a bit but of course where the screen is bled it just makes the bottom quarter at the corner of it just a little bit awkward to see pretty nice sampler obviously in the days of these days of computers I'm not sure you need a sampler but I quite like the idea of I quite like the idea of a sampling instrument I think it has a certain quality to the sound which I appreciate and then um, one of the few non MIDI instruments I've got kicking around here that's uh, 1000p which is uh, an old Casio home keyboard it was sold as a professional instrument but uh, to be honest it was uh, much more of a home keyboard type thing. It's quite a pleasant sound there. I find though I tend to have to put it through at least a couple of effects units to get it to sound um, palatable otherwise it can be a bit dry and a bit uh, cheap sounding but um, some people like the cheap sounding uh, uh, instruments from those from that period so not too bad now before my battery dies on me what we have here is two very little uh, small mixers which I use um, I don't really have a lot of need for large mixing capability because to be honest I tend to do most of the things through the USB interfaces into the PC and can mix there but with this many audio inputs I do need to actually physically get them there so that's what those mixers are used for and then in the rack we have a uh, patch bay which is uh, I don't overly use really I thought it was going to be very helpful but to be honest it's uh, I think because of the quality of the patch bay it's been more of a nuisance than it's worth so uh, I do use it a bit just for patching things together but uh, it's uh, not been as useful as I thought it might be as I said before I then have the AMT8 MIDI controller just below that uh, that's used for the switching 18 8 outs below that we have an A station Novation A station, nice um, uh, analog modeling synth. Below that, we have a Korg M3R, which is uh, very, very 80s, um, very much a sample and synth type instrument. Um, it has some of the sounds from the M1, though, the Korg M1, which makes it uh, valuable in that sense. Below that then we have the VZ8M, the Korg VZ8M. Then below the VZ8M I have a Korg NS5R, a good all-purpose uh, MIDI machine. Um, I do have the Yamaha daughter board in it, which I thought would be a, a useful addition for the XG sounds, but to be honest I'm not entirely sure what it's actually adding to the instrument, so that's um, it wasn't an expensive option, so that was fine. 
Next to that I have a, another fairly recent addition, a Kawhi PHM. Um, I do like the gritty sort of 8 and 12 bit sample, um, cheap sample type instruments and that's what this gives me. Plus it also has quite a useful little um, practice drum machine type function as well. Midi Verb 3 which is I've had for quite a while and gets used all the time. Just sits there and just adds a bit of um, gloss to the sounds. And then below that I have an, um, a Yamaha TG55. The TG55 but also I have the SY77 sound card to go with it so that makes it quite a nice instrument. Uh, and then below that then I have a really cheap old uh, Yamaha reverb that I got for next to nothing. Again, I like sometimes the old-fashioned grittiness of some of those instruments. Just a couple other things of mild interest to people. Uh, hanging there inside a case, I have a Yamaha MK100, which is a very um, unusual instrument, home keyboard type instrument. And then above that, you'll see I've actually got a reel-to-reel -reel there, tak a 3340s which I use for retrieving all the old tapes that I've got archived. Finally, just a couple of odds and ends, uh, a Casio GZ50M, which is a, a really cheap and cheerful general MIDI um, module, which as you can see here, actually I don't even have connected in at the moment, but it's just there for when I want a general MIDI sound. It's actually the piano and the um, some of the ensemble sounds on it are quite nice, uh, especially the pianos are pretty good and very good when layered in with something else. And there's a Casio CT. 202 which I've taken off the rack for the time being is just sitting there waiting for me to work out whether I want to keep it or not. Um, again I'm a big fan of those 1970s, 1980s Casio sounds and that certainly delivers those. Okay, the mini tour is finished.